<sighs> what up everyone michael b petty here um i've been meaning to get around to be make to making this video for some time now this obviously has to do with the whole better help thing this has been blowing up a lot online a lot of channels have been making a lot of videos about the better help scam or uh better help just being not the service that it's being it's claiming to be um there is a youtuber named memeology who's doing a like way better in-depth scope of what better help is on the platform and how it's being utilized and abused by big youtubers to make a quick profit and um i'll leave a link down to his channel below and you can check it out i'm not going to be talking so much about the ins and outs of better help i better help came onto my radar maybe like four or five months ago since I've learned about it or since I've read about it, I thought that it was ineffective. I have never really understood how BetterHelp could really be a substitute or an alternative to classical or um, traditional psychotherapy. So I never really gave it that much credence to begin with. The only reason that I have no about, well, not the only reason I know about it, but the only reason I have a slight opinion about it is in part because I have done Amberlynn Reed videos, as you know, and she talked about being diagnosed by a BetterHelp counselor while that's clearly against their terms of service. Like, they literally say that we are not in a position to diagnose people over the fucking internet. And so that was, like, right away, I was like, well, here we go. This We're going to be going down this train of, like, bullshit that I knew that this was going to inevitably, inevitably happen. I'm going to be talking more about how I think how unethical it is that these YouTubers are exploiting mental illness for profit. Now, I've it it seems like there's this just been this giant fucking influx of people being sponsored or having an affiliate link with BetterHelp. And to me, that feels like a giant red flag. To me, it seems like BetterHelp is just trying to make more money, to get more clicks, to get more signups, to get more subscriptions so that they can get more money. There has been no mention of like how they plan on adequately servicing these new members with credible cl clinicians or clinic or clinical counselors that are actually qualified to be doing and saying the things and counseling these people. I think that that's incredibly warning and it and incredibly just unethical and i don't understand why these big youtubers shane dawson phil defranco boogie gabby jason ash all these fucking people are like quick to make these videos claiming that they have depression and anxiety which i'm sure they probably do but then put a their affiliate link or to put this spiel that obviously better help had them say it was probably written for them at the end or the beginning of their video it to me it just makes their whole thing their whole rate raising awareness thing null and void because you're doing this clearly for money you say that you're doing this to help raise awareness or to like give people more insight into your life and like how you may be struggling and stuff which is fine i think that there's nothing wrong with going on camera and talking about something like mental illness because it does get rid of or it does lessen that stigma around depression or anxiety being so disgusting and icky the problem i have is when you do that clearly because you were incentivized to do it I'm not even talking about running ads on your video. If you want to run ads on your video, go for it. I think that, like, honestly, that's probably in their settings already automatically that they run ads on all their videos. So I'm not going to even give them that much pushback when it comes to that. But I find it very interesting that all of a sudden we're getting an influx of these I have depression or my mindset or I'm going through this videos all sponsored by BetterHelp. To me, that implies that you this wasn't an organic or a genuine video. You were clearly doing this because you got an email on your business account and the dollar signs were right. And so you said, hmm, well, I can't just like do a regular vlog and then at the end talk about BetterHelp because that's going to make me look bad. So let me exploit my mental illness that I have right now or let me drum up something so that way I can make a video so I can show BetterHelp that I did this so I can get that that money deposited into my account. It's extremely disheartening to see that. And it's especially when you, I don't want, I don't look up to any YouTubers, but I do um, think that a lot of them are good people. And so you hope that they're not doing this with an ulterior motive. And with most things, I think people don't give a fuck about, like when it comes to product placement or talking about going eating at a restaurant or getting this sent to you and trying it out. No one really fucking cares about that. 
But with mental illness, it's very tricky and it's a very slippery slope. And I think it's something that you just shouldn't fuck around with. I think if you wanted to be a better advocate for mental health, I think there are way more other options for you to go down than using a company that is clearly in it for profit margin. They're clearly in this for money. I don't see, but I don't think the people at BetterHelp are doing this out of the kindness of their heart, that they're flooding all these huge YouTubers, giant amounts of money, because God, you know damn well, if the beauty gurus are getting paid $60,000 to talk about a fucking Morphe brush, you know good and well that these other big YouTubers with these large subscribers counts and large view counts are getting paid just about as much money to talk about betterhelp.com. Where the fuck all this money coming from? I have no idea. I guess $35 a week subscriptions by a million people adds up to a lot of money if that's really the true case, if that's really what's happening. But I think that these giant YouTubers have a bigger responsibility to their audience when it comes to talking about things like this. I think that there are so many other avenues that you can explore for getting appropriate and adequate mental health help than a company like BetterHelp.com, which they pretty much, if you read their terms and service, they pretty much absolve themselves of having any kind of responsibility when it or accountability when it comes to the sessions that they're holding through their messaging app or their fucking their Skype session. I don't even know if they do Skype. I do know that people message that is the one thing that I have heard is that they do messaging, which to me sounds like the most ineffective thing that has ever existed. I don't know how anyone could really really help someone through texting. Like that's crazy to me. I think that it would be more appropriate for these giant YouTubers to to say, look, if you're struggling with uh, mental health and you really feel like you are in a place where you need, you want to better yourself or you want, you, you need some help, like you can no longer do this by yourself anymore, then here's a thought. My first thing would be like, try to get affordable health care. <laughs> I mean, we do, if, and I'm only going to talk about America because I live in America, so it's the only thing that I can kind of relate to. I would be encouraging my subscribers to seek and try to get some kind of health care. Now, I know that health care in America is bullshit and like we have tons of issues when it comes to premiums and all that good stuff. And even the health insurance policies out there aren't the greatest. But if you are in a position to have health care or if your job has health care, then get your card out, look at the numbers on the back, call member services and say, I need a counselor or I need a psychotherapist or I need to see a psychiatrist. Can you help me out? And they will if you have coverage, they will, they'll figure out, okay, you can go and see this person for this amount of money or this person for that amount of money. And usually it is cheaper than just paying straight out of your pocket. Another thing, if there are training clinics in the city that you live in, now obviously if you live in a more rural part of America, there's probably not a bunch of training clinics. But if you do live in bigger city areas, they do have training clinics where there are people that are in the end stages of getting their uh, licenses to be therapist and they have to actually do hands-on training like one-on-one -on -one training you can go to these clinics and get a reduced price for therapy and sometimes you can get it for free and usually there is like an instructor or there's someone there that is overseeing the actual one-on-one -on -one, uh, therapy session so you don't have to really worry that like this person doesn't know what they're doing also mind you these people are in the last stages of getting their license so like a lot of these uh, psychotherapists or these psychologists or whatever they're two, three years deep into grad school. So they have they know they're pretty much well-versed. They just don't have a lot of the hands-on clinical hours. And so that's why they're, they're at, still at the clinic. So you can go there and you can actually get a reduced price for um, getting some therapy at training clinics. That's totally plausible too. Another thing that is you can also do is you can also visit the Department of Health uh, or the Department of Human Services on the government website and they will direct you to um, community mental health centers that do offer a more reduced price for seeking therapy and they're actually licensed and they're actually you know uh, they follow regulations they are they're constantly checked in on it so you don't have to worry that these people are like not see that's the thing with better help is you don't know if these people are legit or not because you're not in a room with them you don't see their light like not that you if you saw their like plaques on the wall that get, makes them valid or whatever but i just think that there's too much gray area with the whole better help thing so yeah you can go to the department of human services look at the men their mental health community centers and find one that's near you and go in there and, start, and talk to someone about seeing a counselor or a therapist at usually a, a reduced price or sometimes even free from my understanding better help is 35 
five dollars a week, which is what that is a hundred and forty dollars a month. Usually, you can see a therapist for less than a hundred dollars for a session. And typically, when people go to therapy, they don't necessarily need to see someone weekly. Sometimes they see them biweekly. Sometimes they see them monthly. Sometimes they see them every three months. You don't need to see a therapist every week. Now, mind you, if you're in a place where you need to see a therapist every week, then if you have the means and you have the opportunity, go for it. Maybe find a therapist and pay $100 and just see them once a month instead of seeing him four times a month and that being $400 a month. Maybe that's the way to go. I just think that this whole better help thing has just blown up way out of proportion. And I think that it's quite frankly gross that now we've decided that we're going to monetize or not even monetize. We're just going to like straight up get sponsors to like talk about these incredibly personal things that I'm sure affect millions of pe people around the globe and not give them a, an adequate or a legitimate way of finding the resources that are going to actually help them. And I think that it's irresponsible and I don't like it. And I, do, I really don't fuck with it on any level. And it's why I've had a lot of issues with certain videos that have been coming out because it's just like, why are these people doing this? Are they doing this because they really are struggling or are they doing this because they got an email in their inbox saying, if you make X video and mention X, then you will get X amount. See, it's hard to it's hard to it's hard to split that apart now. It's hard to like know whether or not these people are being ethical with their viewpoints or if it's purely for money. And unfortunately, that's where we are, and that's the state of, of which we're in. Is I guess that we're going to start selling mental illness on the platform to make a quick buck, which is fucking sad. I mean, we thought the beauty gurus were bad, but shit. I mean, they were pretty much everyone else was like, "Hold my beer, Manny MUA. Like we can fucking figure this out. We can do this way better than you ever thought you could." I don't know. I just wanted to give my thoughts a little bit about the whole better help thing being not really that much better. And again, look into the things that I said in the earlier video earlier in the video if you are really struggling and you do need help. There are ways to find affordable mental health care in America. It is not the most intuitive process, but I promise you there are ways of getting to the proper res resources that you need. It's just going to take a little bit more el effort than downloading an app <laughs> on a phone. Unfortunately, you're going to have to do you're going to have to be more of an advocate and more proactive in your healthcare, which I think you should do regardless. So, I just wanted to kind of give my two cents on this. Um, thanks for watching. Toodles.